Hello, it's Scott Manley here in Hawaii still, and today has been an interesting day for, well, to talk about space funding, because we had the live auction off the uh, spare seat on the new Shepard flight, which will have Jeff Bezos and his brother. They had put it up and people were bidding on the website, and then the people that had put out the big money got to actually turn up to a live auction and make their bids and the price just kept on going up until it hit 28 million dollars which is frankly ridiculous for a 10 minute flight now it isn't the person necessarily buying it because really they're not paying that money to blue origin it's a very large donation to the uh whatever their charity is their non-profit like the plan for tomorrow or whatever look <laughs> I forget what it is. But yeah, somebody is uh, giving $28 million so that they can fly to space for 10 minutes with uh, Jeff Bezos uh, next to them. And you know, maybe they expect that this will get let them get them to know a uh, you know rich guy better maybe they think they'll make some business deal while flying I, I you know i don't think they'll be signing any documents in space but look this is this is good for blue origin because of course suddenly it increases the mystique and cachet associated with their suborbital flight well that will be on july 20th we don't know the person that won the bid yet because they have to go through a whole bunch of like vetting to show that they actually have the money uh, you know, like but uh it would be kind of funny if elon musk had won it that would be funny but um but no it, it's uh, obviously good for blue origin who want to make a big splash and make their you know joy rides to space seem quite exciting uh i mean it's pretty bare bones if you think about it it's a 10 minute flight barely in space there's no in-flight meal service which honestly no in-flight meal service is pretty much what i had when flying to hawaii because I, I don't know, I guess despite, you know, I, I guess I'm still flying economy these days because of my uh, thrifty upbringing, let's say. So yeah, the other sort of wrinkle in this is that there is a chance that Virgin Galactic flies Richard Branson in the intervening time. They have a number of test flights scheduled and it's entirely possible they try to steal a little bit of Blue Origin's Thunder by, you know, flying there founder ceo big money person first but that wouldn't be necessarily as a passenger and they certainly wouldn't be allowed to take paying passengers but it is something to watch now in the middle of this over the last few weeks there's been a lot of talk of funding for the space program uh, in the u.s specifically and of course this is all politics which means not only am i talking about billionaires and jeff bezos and spacex i'm also talking about republicans and democrats so the whole comment section is probably going to be a disaster and i'm going to be deleting comments and whatever be nice right seriously we're, we're all fans of space here so yes first of all the nasa budget request has been finalized and published this is basically the white house sending a message to Congress to say this is how much we'd like you to give NASA, these are the programs we'd like you to fund. Congress then of course has to turn around and approve it and put it into law and frequently they make huge changes. And this is one of the best budgets uh, in uh, in recent years. I mean it's, it's a huge increase in many places. Every program has a, an increase requested with three exceptions and those are SLS, JWST and the Nancy Roman Telescope and all of these are moving out of the development phase into the operational phase, so it was expected that they would have reduced uh, funding requirements. There is more money, even adjusted for inflation, right, than for, for planetary exploration than at any point in NASA's history. And, you know, this is even comparing it to the 1960s when NASA was throwing probes at the moon because they needed to understand it for Apollo. And they were throwing space probes at Mars and Venus because they were, of course, competing with the Russians and wanted to score propaganda points in the Cold War. Um, so, yeah, there's money for Europa Clipper, Dragonfly, uh, Mars Sample Return. There's also money in there explicitly for near-Earth asteroid uh, you know, defense. So you've got NEO Survey getting funded. We've got DART, the uh, you know, double asteroid ro redirect test. There's um, upgrades to Goldstone, which if... After Arecibo went offline last year, planetary radar took a huge hit in capabilities. So they're trying to get some of that back by upgrading Goldstone. 
So yeah, this is a formidably big budget and, uh, well, hopefully it gets funded. Like previously, of course, we've had previous presidents, uh, Trump, in the first couple of terms, the, the first couple of years, cut a lot of stuff out of the NASA budget, which had to be put back in by Congress. Now, it's possible the reverse happens, that, you know, Biden's budget has stuff cut out of it by Congress or stuff moved around. And yeah, let's come to Congress, which is, of course, the House and the Senate. And there's been uh, a bill passed by the Senate right now, which still has to go through Congress and may get modified. But it was a bill that's supposed to help U.S. remain competitive in technology uh, against other countries. And when they say other countries, they mean against China. So there's a bunch of money in here, which due to an amendment... Um, make sure that there's more money for space technology. Very specifically, an amendment authored by Maria Cantwell of Washington State wants to make sure that Blue Origin and the rest of the national team are back in the human landing system program. So about a month or so ago, NASA announced the results of the competitively bid human landing system competition, and it was SpaceX. And SpaceX pretty much won it because, yes, they were incredibly... Uh, ambitious but equally despite being incredibly ambitious they were also the cheapest because a huge part of the funding was already covered by other things that SpaceX wanted to do. Now this annoyed many people in Congress no doubt that had uh, you know links had states with the the national team you know Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman and Blue Origin so uh, I think really what happened was about a year ago Boeing was eliminated from the human landing system contention because they were way too expensive. And there was a bit of a scandal around that because it turned out that the head of human spaceflight at NASA, who was kicked out of this position for this reason, he had leaked data to Boeing to try to make them still competitive. And even with this leak, they were completely non-competitive with the other three ones that made it through to the final round. But I think without having Boeing in there and their lobbying power, Congress wasn't that interested in funding the human landing system and it got one quarter of the funding. So NASA did what it could with a small amount of funding and SpaceX was, was the winner. So now I sort of see this as Congress turning around and saying, wait, no, we expected you to cancel the whole thing entirely and give all the money to Boeing. Quick, have some extra money so that, you know, Blue Origin can get in. Now, to be clear, the text of this amendment, what it says is that there's NASA is required to pick a second option for the human landing system uh, within 60 days of this. Now, it also stipulates that Congress has to supply or you know, ensure that there's $10 billion of funding over the next five years. And this, these two things together took a number of people to start coining, calling it the Bezos bailout. Why should we bail out Jeff Bezos who came in second place? Why should we give him $10 million? I'm going to say the term Bezos bailout that was adopted by Rand Paul and Bernie Sanders, and you have to think that something's crazy is happening if both of those are agreeing. Uh, I'm going to say Bezos bailout is BS because, first of all, it's $10 billion, but it is split between all the, the winners of the HLS contract. It extends the contract to five years to make sure they have uh, funding for actual landing operations. Uh, also, the national team isn't just Jeff Bezos. It's Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Draper, right? There's multiple companies involved in this who all would benefit from this. But really, it's not a Bezos bailout. It's a NASA bailout because NASA needed the money. They never got the money. Now Congress is saying, oh, we think we should maybe give you the money. And I'm cool with it, frankly. I know a lot of people are not happy. Like SpaceX were protesting this as well because on their principle, they said this was a fair competition and that now by adding this money in and stipulating a second winner, this is basically a handout, a non-competitively bid handout to Blue Origin and the national team. And there is some truth to this, but NASA did originally say that they wanted to have two winners and they were forced for cash reasons to only have one. Anyway, look, the other part of this amendment is really ridiculous, though. There's another part it was to get support for this 
there was Senator Wicker, I think, from Mississippi, or I forget, wherever the Stennis Space Center is. Now, as you know, Stennis Space Center has been, uh, you know, getting a lot of attention because they tested the SLS core. They did that hot fire, the fuel du full duration fire. Spectacular operations testing these engines to demonstrate that they actually worked. And now that SLS is moving into an operational phase, there's no more need for the testing. But Rod, the, the Wicker's amendment basically says, you're going to buy another SLS core and you're going to make sure you test it and test it and test it more so that there's jobs for this testing in, uh, in my state. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm forgetting which state. I think it's Mississippi, but I could be wrong. I'm sorry. Oh, dear. Ah. <sighs> I'll have to go there someday and apologize and buy you all drinks. Not the whole state, just the cool people that want to you know, invite me. Uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, the, the funny thing is that this is very likely five or six years down the line at best. By this point, they will be landing people on the moon with the Artemis program before this testing of SLS <laughs> occurs. I, I would say that I'm not sure this actually survives Congress, because Congress, of course, has to take this bill and they have to reconcile it with their version. And uh, yeah, I, I can see that there might be some people raising an eyebrow at this and saying WTF. Uh, but then again, you know, you might also get the HLS amendment uh, killed. I don't know. Look, it's politics. It's really hard to tell what happens. And, and yeah, I know I can hear you all commenting right now. Um, yeah, and so another side is... Uh, Bill Nelson, of course. Bill Nelson, administrator of NASA, former senator. It appears he knows how to make political sausages, right? <laughs> he knows how the sausage is made, so to speak. Uh, and, of course, he's doing the rounds. He was trying to pitch for NASA getting into this technology bill. But he's also pitching for NASA to get funding from the infrastructure bill, or jobs bill, as he likes to point it out. Um, to basically say, let's you know, spend money on NASA facilities, let's upgrade all sorts of NASA facilities. And at one point was arguing that NASA infrastructure could include NASA's human landing system to land on the moon. Because, hey, you know, infrastructure, transportation, landing on the moon, it's the same thing, right? I'm not sure that's going to make it in there, but I do see that it's very likely that NASA could get a pile of money from, from this. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. So look, um, that's kind of where everything stands. Obviously, this whole thing is going to get baked out over the coming months. But it is interesting to see that there's all these different pots of money and bills that are pushing towards giving money towards NASA. And when Biden won the elections you know, last year, I sort of said, listen, we all know that push they were pushing really hard on Artemis for not necessarily scientific and technology reasons. They were pushing hard largely for political reasons. And it would be absolutely expected for them to hit reset on the landing date for Artemis and push it out a couple of years to give them some breathing room. They haven't done this. They're sort of doubling down on 2024. I'm not convinced they can make it. But uh, then again, if they threw enough money at the problem, they could make it. So... <laughs> it's going to be an interesting four years, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, let's see what happens. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.